Hey guys, it's Sigurd my house, bidding you welcome. I'm still a little bit sick, unfortunately. I've actually taken the day off of work to just kind of rest up a little bit. As you see, it's a lovely day. And it is significantly warmer outside than it is inside my house, so... I am going to be doing this video outside, and if you have a problem with that... I don't know what to tell you, but... This video is my top 10 most expensive CDI games, or most valuable I guess you would say. And this is a video response to three people, three of the boys. SCL Sourcing, Tin, who did his most valuable Super Nintendo games, link in the description. A. Crosby, who got a Pornhub video and did his most expensive... I think it was PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 and Super Nintendo games, as in... <laughs> you have to see his one, his one is weird. And you have Jeff McKenzie, who did his top 10 most valuable Super Nintendo games as well, I think, so... Or it might have been PlayStation 2. I think it was PlayStation 2, actually. <laughs> so, you know when three of the boys do a specific video, that you have to do one, too. I mean, there's really no question about it. I've been forced. My hand is forced to do this, and... I could show you stuff that you've all seen already. I mean, if you've seen their videos, I basically have the titles they have as well, so... Yeah, I could show you those titles, or I could show you something completely different, and I think that's more what I'm going for. Instead of showing you PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Sega, uh, I'm going to show you my top 10 most valuable CDI games, and uh, this one's difficult because CDI games... They are scarce. For anyone who collects them, you know you just don't find them in the wild. You don't, you just don't find them. I've found one CDI game in five years of collecting and it was a movie. And I picked it up for a buck, so... The rest of the CDI stuff I've ever gotten has always been online. It's odd because you rarely pay actual face value for CDI games because you can buy them in lots. You just wait for someone to upload a lot bit on it and you'll probably win if you lowball it so not many people clicking for the CDI which is good for me and but because a lot of people are collecting for it because they're so scarce it's kind of hard to put a value on them so I'm going off of the American website pricecharting.com which usually means nothing to me I mean and these are all PAL copies anyway so yeah it doesn't really matter but We'll see. I'll make this video, I'll tell you about the games, and I'll put the price charting things for how valuable they are, because I don't actually know offhand. But the first one we have here is... I actually have them from least valuable to most valuable, just because I did look them up from price charting, but... You know, I don't know if these are right or not, because these are PAL copies, that's NTSC. And even there, it has like... Three sales per year, two sales per year, and that's a pretty de big difference in price, so... You know, it's just hard to put an actual price on these, that's what I'm trying to get across. We have Dark Castle here. This was reviewed by the Angry Video Game Nerd a little bit ago, like a year or two ago. And it's not a very good game. It is a... I guess you would call it a puzzle platformer where you play as this character who's trying to run through this castle and get to the end of it. It's not very good at all. The CDI version, the controls are very, very difficult to grasp. Um, it's the kind of game that was made for home computers, but then was put on a console, so... It's not very good. And I like the CDI, and I'm saying it's not very good. We have Kether. Kether is actually a very cool game. It's a... Kind of full motion video discovery kind of game where you go through various levels and you're unlocking puzzles and it's not really levels, it's like one big open world. It's uh, it's like a lot of games on the CDI uh, where it's like full motion video mixed with an adventure game and it's actually very, very fun. I'm not sure if this was released on computers or anything, but it is on the CDI. We have Voya, another kind of full motion video adventure game, but with a twist, this one sees you playing as a Voya and spying on various government officials and their families. 
it's kind of interesting because they're all having sex with each other. And because it's full motion video, the acting is really, really bad, but I really enjoy this title. And it's worth a little something something, which is always nice. We have Kingdom the Far Reaches, which is once again a full motion video adventure game, but this one it's more you click on an overhead icon, you go to the world map, you click on an area, and then it'll show you what happens when you go to that area instead of being like Voya where you have no idea what to do. You can kind of figure out what to do just by naturally playing this game. And it's actually very good. You play as a young knight who's trying to I believe save his kingdom. I don't know, it's been a while since I played this one. It took me like four hours to complete just through trial and error, and it was very, very good. It's a good game. I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. And to my knowledge, it is a CDI exclusive. Next, we have the seventh guest, which is on various consoles. Um, once again, full motion video adventure game. This one has horror elements, which is why I bought it. You go around a mansion solving puzzles, and each puzzle you unlock unlocks more of the story as to why you are in the mansion, and it's very good. The sequel to this, The Eleventh Hour, is also a very good game. But it's the kind of game where I needed a guide to finish and get through this game. Uh, I didn't need a guide for this. <laughs> the, j the joy of sex, this is exactly what it sounds like. It is a kind of sexual board game type game. It's a really weird one. Um, I haven't played it too much just because, you know, it's it's not the kind of game I would really play, but from what I was playing, like it would ask you questions about your sexual partner and then you'd give the answer and then your the person you play against would tell you if you're right or wrong, but I didn't play this with anyone, I mean. I couldn't play that with anyone. Uh, but it's worth some money. And it's not the only kind of adult game on the CDI, there are other ones. Whew. Lemmings! Everybody loves lemmings, everybody knows lemmings. Whoa! Uh, even the floor loves lemmings! <laughs> Alright. I shouldn't have to explain Lemmings, I mean, you should know what Lemmings is, if you're a gamer, so. Lemmings there, good game. And this one I have two copies of, I don't actually think it's worth what price charting says it's worth, but I have two copies of it, it's, what, in my opinion, the magnum opus of the CDI, it is... Escape from Cyber City. It is a another full motion video game in the lair of a uh, in, the lair. in the style of a Dragon's Lair type game. So it's very fast paced. It's very frantic. It has gorgeous cartoon graphics, and it's based on a anime movie. I think. There we go. Galaxy Express 999 and Adio Galaxy Express. So. It's very good. I've never finished it just because it's very difficult, as is Dragon's Lair, but it is a fantastic game. Alright, down to the last two here. We have Explorer 1, Peter Gabriel's Secret World, and I don't know why this is worth any money, because it's not really a game at all. It's like a lot of CDI, just kind of software. It's a... It's like computer soft, where if a sound board, like a tour of this guy's house, this guy, Peter Gabriel, like, from what I know, he's a sound artist, so, this is just kind of his game. It's like an activity center, but it's worth a bit of money, and it's for the CDI, so, and I got this super cheap, I mean, I didn't even get this in a lot, I think I paid $7 after shipping, so, <sighs> <coughs> Sorry about the coughing and sneezing and all that, I am sick. You know, I'm not at my best right now. And finally we have Link the Faces of Evil, which is probably one of the... Well, it is one of the better known CDI titles, and... I have spoke about this before, and I... I will confirm that it is my favorite CDI game. I think this is actually a very, very good game, and that people don't give it the time of day just because 
of the negative stigma surrounding it, so it's also worth a bit of money, so I could never actually recommend someone paying a hundred dollars to get this, but you know, if you can get it in a lot like I did for relatively cheap, I mean I think I paid something like ten dollars for this. It was ten games in the lot for a hundred bucks, so yeah, I think this is a very good game. I've talked about this quite a bit, so I won't hear if you do want to hear more of what I have to say about this game. I do have a video up. Ugh. It's kind of, kind of giving my opinions on it. It's in one of... I think it's in the games I played and enjoyed in 2014, so... Check that out if you want to, and that is it. That is my CDI collection, so I will edit this video together. Hopefully in the sun because it is nice and warm but if not I'll have to go into the house where it is dreary and cold my house doesn't have insulation so that's why it's cold but thank you for watching uh, if you have any want to know any more information about any of these titles don't hesitate to ask this is Seeger of my house bidding you farewell And that's all, folks.